that that coming period ends on the 15th of July. I read it. Um, uh, Carlton is read it. Oh, I see Edmund is putting his hand up. Edmund Chung. Thank you, uh, Edmund Chung here. Um, well, I guess this is uh, something that, well, at least personally, I've fought for, at least for it to be put out for public comments. It wasn't there until I think it was uh, maybe today uh, or at most uh, yesterday, because it was brought up at the uh, public forum that this that this wasn't, uh, we didn't know why this uh, plan wasn't put out for, for comments. I think it is it is very relevant for for, for ALAC and uh, uh, would love uh, I, you know, but to suggest that, that we do try to put something together in response. Cheryl. Thank you, and obviously if that's there, then the answer is yes. It, it certainly, we definitely need to do. Um, I now opening up the, the place that we look at for these public comments, and yes, it's, it is suddenly there. But that, that is the exception, not the rule, and I thought we actually had discussed that at our last executive committee, Alan, with you. Your, the, your point, I think it was us that you discussed that. I, I know I said it at this table sometime yes. this week, but I don't have a clue who else was around the table at the time. Uh, I think I was not called back from another meeting to discuss it. I think. Thank you. Um, so, in order to have something done, could could I ask Edmund perhaps whether you, since you seem pretty eager and well I, in the know. I, I guess I'm happy to to help draft something to get started. Uh, but I, I I'd like to get a lot more input from it. Well, what I suggest, of course, because we are running out of time and we might soon run out of power altogether, is to ask this to be an AI as an immediate action item uh, to uh, collect uh, information and, uh, of course, to set up a wiki page for this, which is our usual way of collecting information. We better have, remi we better have reminders by middle of next week. Yes, absolutely, when we'll be back in our own countries and, and awakened from a very long two-week sleep. Um, next is the preliminary issue report on the current state of the UDRP, and I've heard a lot of noise around the corridors here, but I wonder how much noise do we need to make. Alan? My personal opinion is we should not, number one, we should not be we, we, it's, it's an important policy which has been on the books for 12 years or so, and a, re, a, re, well, a periodic review is a good thing. There have been statements that have been made that the work group model is not up to doing something as complex and technical as the UDRP. Uh, I would like to see a comment made on that, that if that's the case, why are we dictating that the working group model is what we must use for everything else. Uh, either it's not, up for, it's not up for everything or it should be good enough for that. Um, and, and that I do feel warrants a comment. The intellectual property community has essentially said if we open it up, we're going to open it up for a lot of things and boy are you going to be sorry. I'm translating slightly, but not a lot. Uh, and that may well be true. I, I think the middle path that people are talking about now is some sort of a review group, but not a PDP, but at least let's start getting our cards in order and we'll understand what the issues are. And that's probably something we can support if it were proposed. I'm not sure we want to be the one to propose it. Thank you, Alan. Any other view from other? Oh, yes. Charlene Deneau. Thank you, Charlene Deneau, for the record. I'm not countering Alan's view at all. It's just we had two things in the same conversation. I, so I agree. But absolutely with the UDRP. I just wanted to come back for one moment and suggest that if we're going to do something in a short time called the UGTLD communication plan, not only do we need to get the wiki page up, we need to see Michelle Jordan to see who can either provide us with material to push out to our edges, give us uh, you know videos that they may have already put together or webinar opportunities or just darn well come and talk to all our AL. Uh, all our regions, because we shouldn't have to go and pitch it. We shouldn't be looking at it. I've just read it. Um, wasn't that hard to read? I've literally just read it. Um, so it could be easily um, easily done as a, as a woman or something. Just for information, is it in multiple languages or? No. 
Thank, Thank you very much, um, uh, Cheryl. Before I, I um, give the floor to Carlson, um, two things. One, yes, the document is rather is not that large, um, which t says a lot about the new GTLD communications plan. The other one being that there is a video that has been released uh, by ICANN, and I do have a link to that video, uh, which I think I might circulate. If there is no more official link to that video, maybe there is a, an, a more official one. I, I have an unofficial link to it, which effectively is a marketing video or a sales video, as some people call it, selling new GTLDs. Um, Carlton. I can see a cut, Sam, that's a red cut. Um, they, uh, as uh, Sharon pointed out, it, what they have here was, is... <laughs> the, the big problem <laughs> I see here is that if you look at the number of messages that they want to, to, to relay, that alone sends up a red flag. You don't have a good communication plan when you have so many messages that you want to give. It's, 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 it's not going to work. At least not based on the objective of the, the, the plan, as I, as I read it. Uh, that's the first thing I, I, I notice. And perhaps that one, when you look at it, you will see, you will see the disconnect between the objective and the multiple messages that they are posing to send. Thank you. Thank you, Carlton. Now, may, may I ask a question, actually? Um, the new GTLD communications plan is aimed at, at registrants, isn't it? Or, or Because I just wonder whether this is with an... Potential registries. Potential registries. Registries. Right. So it's it's yeah. It's not even registrants. It's potential registries. So is this something that today affects users? And and should we devote some of our time, which at the end of the day should be there to uh, defend the view, the, the point of view from the users? Should we divent, uh, divert some of our time to to working on this? Um, Evan had his hand first, and then Alan. Evan. We definitely need to. I just don't know if we're under the same constrained timeline because, first of all, registries have to know, um, you know, how to get involved with this. But we have to send out a message of what this means to end users. Uh, I think that the conversations we had with Scott Pins on earlier. Uh, no, yes, Evan, no, but the, the question being, we are asked here, or, or rather there's a public comment that is open here for new GTLD's communication plan. A plan. It's a, if you look at the draft, it's a, a first draft. It's not even um, formatted in any specific way. Does one need to be involved? Olivia, could you just read exactly what this public comment is asking for? I've got the microphone. I'll do it. Cheryl Langdon, for the record. We seek the public's suggestions on strategies that will help us leverage our limited budget and the strengths of ICANN's volunteer community. That's what they're asking for. Thank you, Cheryl. Alan? This is a communication plan to attract registry applications. I think it is premature for us to start informing users about what it will mean in some time 2012 plus when these things start appearing. The only relevant part is to the extent that we believe that users will be helped by new GTLDs, that you know, the internet will be a better place for users by new GTLDs, and I for one have not necessarily seen the convincing argument of that. Is there anything we need to do to make sure the right people apply for registries to achieve that end? I'm not convinced that we have a strong enough argument to make it. Thank you, uh, Alan. Cheryl, and then Edmund. I'll say to Edmund, okay? Edmund. Uh, thank you. I, at this Edmund, uh, I, I, I think a, a few things. One, one of which is that um, I guess the, the whole plan itself, um, how it anticipates okay. spending that money. Of course, you know, it, there's, there's difference between the, the implementation or it, operations which the staff should, should take on. But I think there, uh, in terms of a, a, a level that, that ALAC should be involved in, it's at least how they are spending it and how they're, they're, they're selecting suppliers. Um, that is one. That is, you know, almost at a policy level, which is, you know, how are they are are they, you know, selecting the right 
the, you know, are, are, are how they select uh, their suppliers, you know, a, 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 a right way to, to do this plan, given, given all the constraints, given what we want to achieve. This is one aspect of which. The other aspect of which, uh, which seems to be the, the discussion is, is you know whether users should be should be involved and I, I think I've repeated this too many times perhaps uh, I think users at least in in two or three areas uh, need to uh, should be informed one of which is they form the communities which uh, some new GTLDs might uh, claim to be uh, you know uh, representing and that's why users need to know you know some some registries may be coming up and saying that they we claim that we are, uh, you know, representing you, and therefore they, they need to know to, 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 you know, make sure they're not misrepresented, or they might want to join together and, and be represented. So, so that's that's one aspect of it, and and the, and a uh, related aspect is, you know, if they do not wish to be represented, or you know, if they have problems with certain uh, registries, they need to know that this is coming uh, and you know, be, be aware of that this is coming or they may be too late uh, to, to, to object or to, um, to do anything about it. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you very much, Edmund. That's an interesting panel of views that we have here. Uh, Cheryl, you wish to? I was hoping to, to bring us to close on this particular point by suggesting it appears to me that we do need to do at least something. Um, and there's certainly the, the resources that were exercised during the Asia Pacific Regional Internet Governance Forum recently where the, the panel activity uh, that had this topic, I mean that, that's available, it's transcribed, it's, it's video, um, we, could, we could actually use some of those to get some of this conversation going. I think there might be a, an issue where some regions will want to take more of a role than other regions and if I dare speak on behalf of Asia Pacific I'll repeat what I, I said before which is it, in the cultural and language diversity that we have to even find a way to alert potential registries that this is an opportunity is a task we have to be involved with we have to get the right people talking to the right people and I think OAC has a role and a large has a role there. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, we have another guest here, Eric Brian Williams, wish to say a few Thank you, Alan. Eric Brian Williams, for the record. Um, Alan, yes, I believe you're, you're correct in that it is targeted towards applicants. Um, but whether or not, the, the question has been mooted around whether or not there is an issue for users. I want to suggest that uh, cooperatives in 2000 were users and that Catalonians mm -hmm. in 2004 are users and that you substitute the word communities for the word registries or even applicants. Um, so are there things to communicate to them? Well, I'm aware of one uh, large ethnic community which may have an application made on their be apparently on their behalf which will be styled as uh, perhaps a community application, but actually submitted as a standard application for purposes of obtaining the advantages of uh, just no restrictions on registration policy. So that's one issue to communicate to communities, which is um, the degree to which they may be used for purposes other than what they think they're being used Abused. for. Abused is a good word, yes. Um, <clears throat> but also, is the um, is the information necessary? Is it exhausted when we re run through the recital of Scott, Wales, Galicia, Britannia, um, the Basque Autonomous Region, um, the Kurdish Autonomous Region in, um, in, in occupied Iraq? Um, at what point do we say, well, that really is enough community involvement? And you notice I didn't say any communities in Africa, I didn't say any communities in Latin America, I didn't say any communities in North America, um, I didn't say any communities in a lot of places. Really, it's um, the, the amount of information that's out there to communities at present is actually quite limited. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Eric. Strong here. And I seem to uh, have quite, well, I hear quite a lot of approval uh, around the room. And it appears that the majority of people here do think that we need to uh, comment on this. I have heard um, from other parts of ICANN, 
also on the board, that uh, it's too early to involve users. In fact, we heard it earlier in the public comment uh, where uh, the chair did say, oh, no, users, no, 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 do that later. At the moment, we're dealing only with with the um, potential registries and applicants, etc., etc. So, um, oh, Cheryl wishes to put her hand up. So Cheryl, well, she has her hand up already. Cheryl, you have one. Thank you very much. Uh, Cheryl, I can the transcript record and I'm busy smiling because I, I, I can't help myself but bring this in. Um, one assumes that the majority of the purpose of these new GTLD registries will be to serve as some form or other of end user community. So perhaps we might need to uh, encourage them to think along the lines that the disability sector internationally has finally managed to start to get some traction and make some changes. They might need to think about the mantra, not about us, without us. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. And um, so it looks like we are going to have a statement. And, and I've heard a lot, so it will be interesting to actually have the summary of what's what's has been said here. I think a lot of it is very valid indeed, and perhaps that could make up part of the statement. Um, I do ask for a volunteer, though, to uh, collate this. And of course, seeing that everyone is, is fighting to be a volunteer, <laughs> as per usual, after after this time. Oh, uh, Edmund is fidgeting, but then maybe not. <laughs> then, uh, then from the corner of my eye, I see Eric Brennan Williams also <laughs> fidgeting and, and looking away, in fact, pointing the camera towards Alan. But Alan is not really impressed. <laughs> it's that know. time of the week where we are not looking to get more work, even uh, in order to get a few more uh, bars volunteer. of candy or anything. I volunteer the man said into the microphone from behind the camera. <laughs> the person from behind the camera said, I volunteer. That's fantastic. Thank you, Eric. Eric Brennan Williams. And but what I will ask, though, is that uh, if, if staff has uh, the minutes, that they will uh, forward those minutes to you as soon as possible, so as for you to be able to have enough material on your hands uh, without having to, yep. uh, and the transcript, uh, without you having to rake your mind about what meeting, what time, when, was that this year or last year? Right. Actually, I do have a transcript. <laughs> I guess we'll move to the next thing, which is the, um, if I can find it. Yeah, but I can't even see that far anymore. It's uh, yeah, blazing yeah. over. Um, no, we, we still have the uh, Who is uh, Policy Review Team uh, discussion paper. And I know that Carlton had uh, spoken to us about this during the, the uh, policy. So uh, I think you've got that in hand, is that yeah. correct? Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Um, I, I went to the, the Who is Review team meeting with the registry, registrar constituency. And it was a very interesting and enlightening discussion taking place. Uh, just to summarize, the one of their problems was two things actually. One is they are concerned that this, the IPC constituency and the law enforcement constituency believe that you can have a visa as a hundred percent valid, and they make the case that that is impossible, and it is irrational to 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 even extend to do that. Now that has an impact on the compliance. And, and the compliance mechanisms in place. And I, I listened to it, and, and, and quite frankly, they have a They're right. unassailable position. They do. There's no way around it. That's the first one. And the other thing that they, they, they um, seem exercised about was the cost was whether the compliance effort you could ever have a compliance effort if you look at the cost value relationship to the compliance effort whether you would ever have enough staffing to do that based on how it is structured today and one 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 of the, the and, and, no, you have to take it you know, the grain of salt because he's speaking from his perspective and he's speaking to capture an audience. He said, um, 
you know, here's a simple, simple thing. We send out these notification um, mails as required periodically, and some of us, we start sending out six months before, three months, and we go through. And said, for those who don't think they're spam, don't think they're spam, and that's the genuine response, he says, I will tell you that we had, we sent out, we did a test run of a thousand, he said, some number. And they got back 63 responses that required manual intervention to correct. And he then estimated the amount of time it took to do that. And he said, we couldn't afford it. And even if we did it, there is no way the compliance team, even with automated tools, could ever validate it. Now, if you know anything about data processing, that is also unassailable. And, and, and it left me thinking. It really, it really gripped me because I sat there and, and now that he was talking about process issues and I understood them because that's my business. I understand how you process data. It, 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 is a, it, it, it isn't that simple. It isn't that simple. And, and I've been thinking about, I have three pages of notes that I took. Oh. And, and I've been thinking about how we would fashion a response that is rational, <coughs> rational. You can't, you can't go to this with emotion at all, because they are the facts are what they are, and, and it's difficult to to get around the facts. And, and I, I don't know what it is yet, but I know that if we're going to make sense of this, we have to have a rational response. I hear you, Evan, and uh, I'm very glad that you've taken much. I hear Carlton. Uh, He's Carlton, Carlton not Evan. I was hearing Evan, no. I was hearing Carlton. You're so <laughs> easily confused. <laughs> I know. Your other right I'm hand. I'm starting to get very, very tired, and now aren't I? I'm starting to hear Evan when it's Carlton that I hear. Okay, I hear you, Carlton. Thank you. Like You're straight a bit. Okay. Um, in the meantime, uh, Alan. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Can, can I just add one thing? Can I just add one thing? I yield the floor for the moment. Th thank you, Alan. Can I just add, add one yeah. thing that they said? That, that they, they, they said one thing that, that, that I think should, should be guide. Should be guidance. One of the fellows said, the solution can ar arise if we focus on the two extremes. On the? Two extremes. It's a story talk. They said, you, you won't have a solution, which the extreme is, is the LAIPC extreme, which you could have 100%, and then the other one where everybody's a cowboy. You, you can't have a solution to this if you focus on the extremes. And I think it is absolutely right. I, I, I wrote it down as certainly because I think that's <laughs> somewhere there. That's what. That's where we have to be in our response. Sorry, Adam. Thank you, Carlton. I guess the, the, the question is really where do we draw the line? Uh, 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 what percentage do we have of cowboys and of... Uh, yeah. Genuine, yeah. Genuine, and, and essentially, shades of grey. Essentially, okay. that's where we have to go. Alan. Thank you. Um, it, it is nice to hear in an at-large room that someone's saying that some of these problems are difficult and not just chastising people for not fixing them immediately. We have had 10 plus years of no one, let's put it bluntly, giving a damn. 
and some of these problems are going to be really complex to fix and some of them nigh impossible. The only way forward, and I'm not pretending to give a specific plan, is to understand this is going to take a long time to fix. We're not going to fix 10 years of ills in three months. We are not likely to achieve 100%. But if we don't start putting something in place to slowly, over a five-year period probably, trying to fix the problems, we ain't never going to fix them. <laughs> Can so, you know, a lot of things get, re you know, domains get renewed. Renewal time is a good time to fix a problem. Um, it's going to be spread out over a multiple, multiple year period. But I, I, I appreciate, make, t I appreciate the concept that we are starting to look at things from the perspective of all of the players not the, just those who are offended by the fact that our data isn't right. And I, I, I understand the, con the, 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 the emotion behind it, but um, I think we have to start putting on the hats, wearing the hats and shoes of the people who are actually are expected to fix the problem and work with them to get to a point. That, that doesn't mean I think they've always been re taking reasonable positions. Those of you who have participated in my, my last two years of task force or working group understand that. But um, facts are facts. We're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have to work with them, and they're gonna have to work with us, and it's gonna be difficult. But that doesn't mean we don't start because we don't see the end point. Thank you, Alan. And perhaps this is part of the maturing of ICANN itself, which seems to uh, let's pretend. Let's hope. <laughs> and finally, in our list of uh, comments open for public comments, not comments, questions open for public comments, we have the second milestone re report, which has been put on there, which I, I must say is, is, is not very well labeled because it says second milestone report when I hope that it would be uh, labeled uh, Joint Applicant Support uh, Working Group Second Milestone Report. I wonder whether there's any chance to have this change? Yes, there is. Because it doesn't make any sense at the moment. Yes, there is. In my time of chair, I've had things altered, and I'm sure you can as well. Thank you very much, Cheryl. Um, so if I could ask staff to, to uh, forward this to whoever it is, that, I mean, I wonder is it, if it's Carla to change this or because at the moment it's not very explicit. Um, question is, does the ALAC as one of the chartering organization wish to submit a statement or a, uh, a comment on this? Cheryl. Thank you. I think the ALAC as such would be ill advised to do so. I think to encourage individuals, the cleaner, the man in the corner, and anyone else to do so. But I think as the ALAC, as the chartering organisation, which is supervisory to this process, we would be ill-advised to do so, but we should get out there and spend an awful lot of energy making sure the regions, who certainly can, the ALSs, who certainly can, and the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick make a big deal. But um, I don't think we should. Alan, perhaps you disagree with that. Thank you, Cheryl. Adam? Oh, sorry. I, I think I had suggested in, in an earlier discussion that the cover letter, the one-page statement that we sent to the board saying we think it's good but it needs to be fleshed out and that kind of stuff, uh, is the ALAC comment. It will, not, it will not show up in the public comment field unless someone submits it on our behalf and it may be appropriate to deposit that just for the record as it were. Uh, but other than that I would not recommend any, any further comment. Thank you, Edith. Sure. Thank you, Olivia, Sherilyn, Bill, for the record. I wonder, Alan, if that's a matter of we all have the, the let me start that again, that Olivia as chair makes sure that if we agree that's a good thing is done by directly liaising with the staff person in charge rather than uh, having it just put in there as a, as a one-pager. I, I think it, what is said needs to be taken into account when they do the telling of it. I, I don't think there's any way of making that happen unless it shows up as one of the comments regardless of how it's uh, incorporated, but I don't really care. May I suggest that the staff, uh, at large staff, asks for this. Seth, would you be able to follow up on this, find out how we could have our 
uh, intro page uh, included in this. Show off the record. It's simple how we can have it included in this. We copy and paste the first page, we push it in an email, and we press send. I'm just questioning whether or not that is a valid exercise for chartering organisation. Ah. I think the material it holds needs to be taken into account and recognised as the statement and contribution to public comment period on the Jazz Boat Group second milestone report. Mm. And that can be done yeah. as yeah. an inquiry to the sure. staff whose job it is to collate the public comment material. Your hair That's what I'm saying. Thank you, Cheryl. Any other comments? None. The, the original question was, do we want... No. Do we want the ALAC to comment on its uh, own forwarding of the second milestone report that it has charted? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. And, oh, that's something a bit strange on the second... Uh, Machine. Oh, it's a, it's just, it's oh dear, okay. It's okay. All over the place, right. And that's it. Um, we've gone through the whole list. You'll be glad to hear. And it is, uh, oh, we're starting to run over business. So now, because we do not have an item number four, well, I guess we finished item number two and we have action items and all of that. Three has um, been dealt with. Three has been dealt with. And four, unfortunately, uh, Akram Atallah has not managed to uh, make his way to us today. He did apologize a little earlier. He was having a meeting with the Singapore authorities. Um, however, there is one thing that will happen, and I have asked him whether it would be possible for the uh, chair and two vice chairs to be able to speak to him uh, whenever he would be available at a later uh, moment in time. Uh, we are staying here another 24 hours and he is also going to remain around for another 24 hours. So at short notice we will be told um, whether we can go and speak to him and, and push forward uh, what uh, we had spoken about earlier. To remind you uh, what we have spoken about earlier and just to make it clear, uh, the idea was to try and find a way to pull the three regional, um, what were called general assemblies. Uh, into one batch so that this one batch of people could be sent to the African uh, meeting in Dakar uh, so as to uh, offer the African region which is in most need of such um, uh, of such uh, uh, such inreach um, and, and could actually benefit from this rather than none of our regions benefiting from anything just benefiting from six people being sent and no general assembly being uh, being done. Uh, so, um, I just asked to ask Com if, uh, the XCOM whether there are any additional comments that they wish to make. Uh, Cheryl. Thank you very much, Olivia. Cheryl Langdonall for the record. Um, assuming that, that this uh, was to get some blessing and event inevitably, um, that's always a challenge. But if this was to happen and a regional meeting was to be being organised at the Dakar meeting, um, I've already, and I'm sure many of us have been, but I want it on the record, um, I've, and I think we should raise it with ACRA. Um, I've already been talking to, for example, in my capacity as CCNSO liaison to the people who organise the CCNSO Tech Day. There are a number of people who would be more than happy to run parallel events. And by people, I mean parts of the ICANN community. So we could actually have a, a you know, at the same place and time, but made available for different people, things like the Tech Day, and they were considering it could be more than CC, but also bringing G training. So um, I just think that's something we also need to let ACRA know, that there is an opportunity for even more bang for the buck, to use those terms impolitely. Um, acting as Vice Chair, I'll recognise you, Alan, go ahead. You know, I was just wondering, does anyone come up with a date for that, that the people from Africa feel comfortable that they need as a drop dead date, that is, tell us by a certain date or we're not going to be able to pull it off properly. Uh, thank you, Alan. Um, this, if I may answer the question uh, early, this is just a planning stage, this has not even been uh, uh, been agreed or it's just an idea at the moment, it's, it's still in seed stage. Uh, I would imagine that as soon as possible is probably the answer. Perhaps Dejani would like to, to add. Um, 
I, I'll just point out, I think that's, that information is needed at the seed stage to decide if we want to go, go ahead with this or not. Tijani? Oui, euh, je voulais... Euh, ah non. Ouais, ok. Euh, je voulais demander à Cheryl si elle parle de euh, membres de système SO africain ou euh, de manière générale. Africain. Africain, ok. Mm -hmm. so, donc pour la date, je n'ai pas de réponse. Euh, non, non, non. Il faudrait que ça soit officiel. Mais okay. déjà, um, uh, how quickly do you think uh, you know, how soon, judging from, from traveling in Africa uh, and so on, uh, you know, how early would you say that participants would need to, to be informed um, in your region? Um, does one need visas? Are there, uh, um, that's, that's the, the usual, the, the questions I have. Sure, uh, it's uh, as every uh, meeting, uh, people, African people normally need visa to go to African countries. So uh, it will be the same um, uh, uh, period needed. And sometimes it's more because some African countries have a procedure, more complicated procedure to get a visa. So, uh, and uh, another, point, another point, not every African country has uh, an embassy in the other African countries. So sometimes you have to travel to get the visa. So uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, exactly the same period needed for the for any other uh, meeting. Thank you, Tijani. So may I just suggest that staff inquires with constituency travel, uh, oh, and and find out uh, what the visa requirements are, just as part of being able to complete a dossier that we might need to complete in case we do go in that direction. Uh, the least number of unknowns there are, the more likely it is that we will be able to. Uh, make a an informed decision on the subject. To, to be clear, I wasn't just talking about visas. The whole concept of setting up an African showcase and uh, and organizing a program and things like that and, and bringing in a keynote speaker, all of these things take time and we have well under four months maximum. So the question is, you know, I would, I would expect the answer is if we can't make a go, no-go decision in a month, it's probably too late. I'm, I'm making up a date, but I, I think we need something like that. You're absolutely right, Alan. And, and one more thing that I wanted to also add um, was to mention during our demands, uh, not demands, sorry, our offer, that this would be a one-off. This is a one-off um, one offer that we are making for this specific uh, budget. I do not think that it should be, and, and that might be my personal view, and I'd like to collect the view around the room, actually. I do not think that this should be something that we should do every year, um, i.e. pooling of resources. It's something where we are trying to basically make something out of however little money we are being given, um, and we should have more than that. It is the exception, not the rule. And it is the exception, not the rule. Thank you, Cheryl, for this. My mind is going a little bit slow now. Um, I think that the decision, Olivier, I think that the decision will be made very, very soon because it's yes or no. So uh, we will have the the, the the answer very, very soon, and then everything will go on. Uh, yes, Tijani, but it's it's just when we speak to Akram, the thing is. Uh, if he does say yes, we do not want this to be uh, next year a question of, oh, well, you did say yes to, to something like this last year, and this is going to be uh, like this every year, and I will just give you money for one uh, specific project. And I think that, oh, Alan. I think the concept of pooling our resources will be, should be a one-time Thing because hopefully they will never again give us little piles of money which we know we can't use without having talking to us privately first. We may well be in a situation, however, where in the future we do not simply take rail requests and put them in a serial pile and pass them on. We may well be in a position where ALAC should be looking at these things and then putting in an ALAC request which may pool regional things and said this year it's a time for Latin America and and yes we know North America and Europe are also asking but it's we're not going to get that much money so let's be realistic so I think we have to do our job so we don't have to recover from a, a stupid 
accounting mistake. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's the last time we're ever going to decide to work together cooperatively. Thank you, Alan. Um, I was going to say Sergio and then uh, Cheryl. Sergio. Eh, no, solamente era para, para los registros acerca de salir a Porto. Eh, solamente era para preguntar, porque habíamos hablado ayer de, de realizar un statement con respecto a, a esto y quería saber eh, cómo se iba a implementar eso. O sea, cómo nos íbamos a organizar para realizar. Nada más que eso. Muchas gracias. Difficulty. Thank you, Sergio. With difficulty, uh, it's it, it's something that we um, well, it's unknown yet. So we're going to have to find out. The first thing that we will do is to find out if there is a a possible approval of of uh, this. Uh, the first statement will just be a verbal uh, discussion, and then as soon as we know if the door is open to that. Uh, at that point, I think we'll probably have to make a quick call uh, for the statement to be written on a wiki page or something. If we wish to have a, jo a, a statement adjoined to the uh, um, to the actual uh, demand, uh, Cheryl. Thank you, and uh, Cheryl, I know for the record, the other advantage, of course, that we have is that as we move from an annual cycle, which is the current problem, to the three-year cycle, which is the plan, then this is a non-issue. Okay, uh, because we will have better better management issues. So I'm kind of less concerned about having the statements, which can always be refused or reported. But I'm very concerned about having, as we negotiate the possibilities, it's very clear that the sentiment in this room is as follows. And I'm pretty sure your chair has got a clear idea of what the sentiment is, um, which is this is not this is a, a rarity. This is us showing how mature and flexible we are under difficult circumstances because we want the best thing in this very difficult environment. So uh, I think two things will come successfully to our advantage. Thank you. And thank you, Cheryl. And I must add that I will pitch this as being exemplary uh, in ICANN. Perfect. Uh, because I think that uh, looking at what happens outside these walls is sometimes a little bit different. But uh, Carlton. Thank you, Chair Carlton Sanders, for the record. I, I, I just want to point out to you that as you pitch this as exemplary, if you take what Alan is saying, which is what I believe eventually has to happen, we have to have a budget instead of having <laughs> regional budgets we're going to have to have a budget that is an at large budget yes. and, and 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 that means you will have to make choices and and that is what we need to put out to the edges now we're gonna have to make choices Thank you very much, Carlton. Oh, Cheryl. Thank you very much, Olivia and Cheryl Langdon, for the ripple. The reason I raised my hand again is that was actually, I, I put my hand up and then I got distracted by all the important points that you were raising, Sergio. So I was responding to you. When I put my hand up, of course, you hadn't spoken and I was responding to go hearty here, here to what Alan had said. And it, it, I had that absolute support that that is the model we should go to. And in fact, that was the model that in 2000, and let me count them, Eight, I think it was, seven, right, in 2007, uh, the ALAC itself and the regional leads had proposed. We are now hastening slowly ever forward in a position to go back to what we wanted to do in the first place, I believe. That's why I'm saying the guy was there to say That's right. Right, uh, I think we've uh, we've gone through this uh, section, and the next section is any other business. So the floor is open. And surprise, surprise, Sharon Lagonor. <laughs> <Lindenor. laughs>
sure I will it off for the record. You are going to miss me when I'm gone. Only just because you're going to miss the sound of my voice. I would dead air that's going to happen in the world. Um, now, I simply wanted to bring to, to the Chair's attention, um, because he may not have had time to get through the landslide of his emails today, knowing what, what his agenda's been like, that as a result of uh, interchanges in the reporting um, from the various AC and SO chairs this morning, um, Louis Lee, uh, representing the ASO, um, has written to all of the leadership, including Olivier, um, simply copied to um, me and Evan, so uh, that's why I'm talking about it, just in case our, uh, our chair hasn't had a chance to read it. Um, and he's off offering the opportunity at the next uh, Dakar agenda, as we're preparing our next Dakar agenda, um, to uh, to read directly with the ASO, and I think it's probably about time uh, that we did put that on the agenda. I just wanted to make sure everyone knew where it, this concept came from and what the purpose of it was. Um, at the moment, the GAC often in, often has uh, discussions with the ASO. Um, CCNSO obviously yeah, it does. Uh, they do a lot of cross communication, but again, to do more formalised. GNSO have already said yes, please, thank you very much, and I'd like to suggest in any other business that we do so too. Thank you, Sharon. Is that from the comments? Yeah, one. Harry Brennan Williams. Thank you, Cheryl. I must have been asleep. Was that John Curran who asked us if uh, it was a request from John or someone else? No, no, it's Louis Lee. I'm sorry? Louis? Louis Lee. Louis Lee. Louis Lee. Chair of the ASA. Oh, okay. The ASA. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? All right. In the absence of anyone uh, saying anything against this, I think this is a fantastic idea and we can uh, go ahead with it. So that's another action item. Um, of course, I'll have to find the email somewhere in my post. And, uh, I see loading message three out of 164, so we'll find out. And that's, of course, in the last 10 minutes. Right, well, uh, I think we're reaching the end of this meeting. I hope, um, I'm just not sure, do we have any questions or any other uh, business online? I don't see any. Um, there's about half a dozen people waiting outside the room, waiting to take this room apart, and probably the building too. Thank you so much to all of you for having survived this enormous week. Um, I don't know how many hours we put into this, but it's, uh, it's beyond uh, anything that I uh, thought was physically possible. I'd also like to thank the interpreters for doing a fantastic job, in two, including... Interpreters are in the very back. And, and also uh, thanking ICANN that we also had interpretation in Chinese, which yes. was uh, fantastic. Yay. And of course, I thank the staff who dealt with the sound. I must say, we had a pretty good sound system and it worked pretty well. So thanks very much for that. Thank you. Very And now, the moment that everybody's been waiting for for the past uh, eight, nine, ten days, is it? Yeah. Uh, this meeting is adjourned. Ah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. There you go. And thank you to Adigo. If, if you oh, yes, Sorry, thank you to Adigo. Yes, thank you. Never mind. Consider it. Wow. Yeah, that was a marathon. Yeah. But I think we did a lot of work this week. It was like... I know I made a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Really? <laughs> well, there you go. Well, some people think that people come here on the holidays, so what do you think? Before everyone leaves, if anyone's here tomorrow and is interested in either Botanical Garden and or the zoo, let me know. Depending on the time, we'll and let's talk tonight before tomorrow, because tomorrow is going to be too late to actually do that. <laughs>